Today we shall be taking a look at one of the most famous endgame study in chess history. This endgame study was composed by the great Richard Retty and it was first published in 1921. So it's white to move and draw the game. You can pause the video and try to find the solution. All right, so let's take a look at the solution. Well, at first sight, white seems to be completely lost. For example, if he tries to stop the pawn from moving ahead, the pawn just rolls ahead and there is no way to stop the pawn. He'll just go ahead and promote. At the same time, if white tries to push this pawn and try uh, in order to promote, black can stop that with king b6. And so, neither pushing the pawn or stopping this pawn helps. So, on the first side, it looks like completely lost position for white. But in fact, there is a way for white to play and draw this position. And after this uh, beautiful composition, this uh, maneuver was uh, started to be known as the Reti maneuver. Uh, this idea is based on the special geometry of the chessboard. In order to reach a particular point, one doesn't necessarily have to move in a straight line. In fact, one can take a curve. So that's the whole concept behind the puzzle. So the solution starts with white moving king to g7. So white king moves one step towards closer to the white pawn as well as one step closer to the black pawn. So black now just advances his pawn. And now white again plays king to f6, moving one step closer to both the white pawn as well as the black pawn. All right. Now black has to spend a tempo in order to uh, stop the white king from helping the uh, pawn. For example, now he has to play king to b6. Let's take a look at what happens if he keeps advancing his pawns. Now white plays king to e6, h2, c7 threatening to promote. And if black king stops that, then we just play king day 7 and after both of them promote, it is just a draw. Alright. So it basically means that in this position, black has to spend a tempo in order to stop the pawn and he play and he has to play, pardon me, he has to play king to b6. So now it's white to play. And white now again approaches both the pawns with an excellent move king to e5 threatening both to play king to d6 as well as supporting the pawn as well as to play king to f4 in order to capture the pawn for example if black just keeps pushing the pawn we can go king to d6 and next we'll promote uh, push and promote the pawn and let's take a look at what happens if black king captures the pawn now we play king to f4 and we are inside the box inside the square of the pawn which means we'll be easily able to stop the pawn and takes. So this was the beautiful, uh, spectacular chess puzzle by Richard Reddy. And it's, it's one of the most famous endgame uh, uh, studies because mm -hmm. at first sight, it looks that white is completely lost. But uh, this really uh, shows us the important concept of uh, that the white doesn't always have to move in a straight line. He can take curve. You know, he can take multiple routes to the same path. So, hope you enjoyed this beautiful chess and game by uh, Richard Reddy. Thank you for watching and do subscribe to my video.